back to the channel real quick, man. Y'all remember this PT Cruiser I was driving yesterday? That basically got me stranded. Uh, came in for uh, uh, stall out, died out. Actually, it was towed in. Okay, always be weary of them cars that's towed in. Okay, they really have a problem, boy. The customer would have drove it in. Okay, anyway, uh, you know me. I like to duplicate my problems, right? So. What do I do? I check for fault codes. There's no codes that will indicate why a car was stalling out, such as crank code or a cam code or anything like that. There was nothing like that. So what I do? Hop on the road. Go driving. Lo and behold, my temperature needle is doing this. Up, 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 up. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Shame on me. Okay? Temperature gauge got close to the H and the car started bucking and eventually stalled out. I managed to pull over in a lot. Now, I bring that up to say this. Uh, first of all, you gotta be uh, aware of your surroundings and the gauges and things like that to all the new mechanics or whatever. But let me show y'all something, man. Uh, this particular car, this thing, it, okay. <laughs> so let me, let me finish my story. I let the car cool down, went in the store, took care of a little, some personal things and thinking maybe when it, cool down i'll be able to start it back up because it literally would not start back up that's when you if you watch that other video you see i'm talking about uh some may have a safety feature that will allow it to stop running in the event of overheating all right i made it back to the shop barely here we are i suspect uh well naturally i check the simple stuff fan is running okay the heater is semi-working. Remember on some of my other videos, I tell you to check things like that. Okay, so what do I do? Take the cap off. Uh, make sure there's not high pressure first. And then take the cap off. And I whip out my block tester. Okay, this is a block tester. What we use this for to check for the presence of exhaust gases into uh, the cooling system. You cannot have any kind of exhaust gases. Because this... We use some chemical solution that start off as blue. And um, of course you get a sample of the gases or fumes or whatever coming out of the radiator. And if your chemicals turn to a different color, then yes, that indicates the presence of exhaust gases. But before I can walk down to my stall, this was all yesterday, to get my cooling, so, uh, my solution to do the test, uh, I was at this point right here. Cooling was virtually spitting out. There's not, bear in mind, this happened quickly because I had just uh, relieved the pressure so I can remove the cap. But once removing the cap, starting the car back up, high pressure immediately coming from the radiator. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is a true indication of exhaust gas presence in the cooling system. Now, it could be from a blown head gasket. I tend to get away from saying things like that because we're dealing with a multi-layer steel head gasket uh, made it to a, an aluminum cylinder head and a cast iron steel block so to me and i get catch a lot of flack for saying this but that aluminum head would give out before that multi-layered steel head gasket okay never ever 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 uh remove go through the trouble of removing a cylinder head especially an aluminum cylinder head just to replace the gasket okay Never just take a head off and put a new gasket, head gasket on and put the car back together. You're taking an extreme gamble. You're taking a chance. You should and you have to send that cylinder head out to get it pressure tested uh, to verify that it's not warped for one thing, verify it's not losing pressure because think about what happened to aluminum, man. Uh, that aluminum can expand and then retract. Co doing this constantly can uh, uh, deem that cylinder head useless. So. Do not just take your head off and put a head gasket on. I, people use that term recklessly. It's a blown head gasket. Oh, it's just a blown head gasket. How do you blow? I mean, you can you can still blow them, but it's very hard to blow them. Now, if this was a paper gasket, yes. You got a blown head gasket, something like that. You, that, that was okay to say back then, but we no longer use paper gasket. We use multi-layer steel gasket. They're very hard to blow. Okay, the only thing I'm saying is never just take your head off to replace the head gasket. Okay, right. so yeah, I'm going to turn this car off so I can uh, finish up the story and wrap this video up. Hold tight. Alright, so unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, let me go back down here. Uh, 
I will have to write up an estimate of uh, normally we would write up teardown time man but y'all know where I'm at I'm here at the dealer they don't like taking chances and uh, I can easily take this head off send it out for repairs get it pressure check and get it if it's warped get that fixed all from the machine shop put on a new head gasket all new valve stem oil seals and uh hopefully uh let them know to do the valve job while we at it but uh for some reason we're not allowed to do that here anymore so my only other option is to write up a complete engine that's basically what we're told to do and uh i really can't blame the uh, dealership like i say a lot of people are lawsuit prone but i'm not even sure there's really not much of a gamble here is is my point because again worst case scenario i take the head out send it out to the machine shop and they call us back and said the machine uh cylinder head is too far gone it's too far walk beyond repair then she would need a head now that definitely will knock her out of uh, you know repair mode because it, there's this thing uh repair versus car value i mean you can easily exceed that with a car like this okay because i'm not like belittling pt cruiser but there's not much of a value to it so if your repair estimate comes up too much then yeah it doesn't make economical sense so uh i'm gonna put it like this this was my car i will pull the head off send it out for repairs put a new head gasket on it and put it back together you know if the machine shop can repair it fine if they can't i would get another head but like i say because the estimate will be extremely high ain't too many customers willing to uh, do that so here like i say i'm i will have to write up a complete engine man poor wow this is a nice car um uh, i mean 170 000 miles not that bad of a car so i'm not sure after i give her this estimate she's gonna even hang on to the car but i just wanted to talk to my subscribers to let you know well i guess uh what you can learn from this is number one uh duplicate man test drive all your cars to verify that it happened imagine if i got that car and uh i didn't drive it long enough for it to overheat or i checked the fault codes there was none and i tell the lady ma'am there's nothing wrong with your car at that point you're calling the customer a liar and like i say they take that very offensively they do not like being called a liar they have other things that they can do without wasting their time setting up here at the dealership so that's number one number two drive the car at least test drive the car until it reach operating temperature now if the needle study go up after that then yeah you know you got an overheating problem but do not rely solely on what the advisor wrote on a repair order if you're in a, a shop like that okay because the lady says she told the service advisor that it overheated i never was under the assumption that the car overheated or i would have took my diagnosis in a whole nother direction you see what i'm saying it could have possibly saved me some time so try to get as much information on the car as possible even the history again if the car was towed in ladies and gentlemen there is some problem if they don't think this car is safe enough to even drive to the shop then yeah you got some major problems and then stuff like this you see this this is broke and that boat is broke off in there this bracket alone is high dollar okay so you have to replace that bracket if if you can't get that boat out of there i know some guys um one of my subscribers i can't think of his name but he good at extracting boats out of things but here at the dealership i will have to write that up to get replaced and this estimate will be extremely high and i'm just rambling on and on so let me end this video right here um uh, again man uh, i never got around to doing my test stuff just spitting out everywhere so i just assume uh don't bother i know where i'm at but on a separate video i'm gonna do this complete test to show y'all exactly uh, what you're up against if you're facing a nagging overheating problem it really helps with them nagging even overheating problems you know you've done everything and it keep coming back uh, once you do this test this will basically verify that you have internal stuff going on and you take your diagnosis in that that direction but for the most part cooling fan work thermostat water flow heater all that but exhaust gases will ruin everything for you all right man i'm gonna end this video it's too long thanks for watching uh comment and subscribe and i will see y'all on the next video